George Delgado has been practicing family medicine in California for over 25 years. He's never supported abortion and always felt a calling to provide medical services to women facing unexpected pregnancies. For the past 10 years, Dr. Delgado has been the medical director for the Culture of Life Family Services in San Diego. The organization is a family medical practice with a nonprofit sector dedicated to helping women and families with unexpected pregnancies. Tell me about the chemical abortion pill known as RU46. Uh, RU46 or Mifepristone was approved in the U.S. in the year 2000. But what it does is it is a receptor antagonist. And all hormones, the way they work, is the hormone latches onto a receptor and then by locking onto that receptor, a hormone effect is carried out. A good analogy for those who are not very medically informed would be a key going into a lock. The key would be the hormone, the lock would be the receptor. When the key goes into the lock, it turns the lock and the door can open. So that opening of the door is what we call the hormone effect. And that's how hormones work throughout the body. However, you can have some chemicals that can be false keys. And that's exactly what mifepristone is. So mifepristone RU46 fits into the lock, but it doesn't turn the lock, so that door never opens. That's how it blocks the effects of progesterone. And progesterone, it's the hormone that supports the pregnancy. Without it, you would not have a successful pregnancy. So by blocking that very essential hormone, then that will lead to a, an early abortion. But there's a second pill also that's needed to be taken, right? Mifepristone RU46 is very good at killing the unborn baby, the embryo, but not all the time does it cause uterine contractures. Well, the reason the second drug was introduced was to take care of that. And so the second drug called misoprostol, also known as Cytotech, and causes uterus to contract to expel the contents of the remains of the baby that was aborted by the mifepristone. How many chemical abortions are done in the United States each year? There are ab about 20 to 25 percent of all abortions done in the United States these days are accomplished with mifepristone. So we're talking about 200 to 250,000 that range. Do you expect that to increase over the time? I do because it has increased thus far. Just in the last five years, the rate went from about 18% to up to 20 to 25%. In several European countries, up to 80% of all abortions are accomplished using RU46 mifepristone. Doctor, how did you come up with the idea for a way to reverse the effects of the chemical abortion pill? Well, first let me tell you about the first person who had the idea, because we both had the idea uh, independent of each other, but he actually did the very first um, reversal of mifepristone RU46, and that's Dr. Matthew Harrison, who's now our associate medical director. Dr. Harrison, back in 2006, 2007, in North Carolina, had a woman approach him who had taken RU46 and had changed her mind, and she was wondering if there's anything she could do to reverse it. So Dr. Harrison had had some experience using progesterone in pregnancy, and he paused and thought a moment and thought, well, if the pro progesterone is good for the pregnancy, and we know that the mifepristone blocks the progesterone, what if we give more progesterone to outcomplete that mifepristone RU46? Maybe we could have success. And so he tried it, and it worked back in 2007. Two years later, in 2009, I didn't have any knowledge of his reversal. He hadn't publicized it or published anything. Well, I got a similar call from a sidewalk counselor in Bakersfield, California, named Terry Palmquist. She got a call from a woman in El Paso, Texas, who had taken mifepristone RU46 and had changed her mind. She asked me the same question, can you help her? And I said, well, I've never heard about anybody trying to reverse uh, mifepristone RU46, but I know how it works. And I had had a great deal of experience using progesterone in pregnancy to help women with threatened miscarriages. So I thought, what if I give more progesterone to outcompete the mifepristone? So I got on the internet and I found uh, Dr. Jonalyn Bellacura in El Paso, Texas, and I knew that she had worked with uh, women using progesterone. So I gave her a call and I told her how I thought we ought to give the progesterone. I mapped out a, a protocol for her and she agreed to do it. She treated the patient and the baby survived. Debbie Bradle has been with the Culture of Life Family Services for the past four years and is currently the nurse manager for the Abortion Pill Reversal Project. Debbie works side by side with Dr. Delgado to research and document the early abortion pill reversals. In December of 2012, Dr. Delgado published a case study in a peer-reviewed medical journal. The study followed six women from the reversal to delivery. 
There were four successful births with no complications and two miscarriages. Shortly after, they launched a website and 24-hour hotline to help women who regretted their decision to take the abortion pill. That was about May 2012 is when we put up the website, abortionpillreversal.com. Those first few months, I, I, I think we got only 20 calls from May to December, and then they've been steadily increasing ever since. We're at about two and a half call, two to three calls a day now. We have about eight nurses who, when the hotline number is called, the router sends it to their phone. So we don't have a, we're not all just sitting here in an office waiting for a call. We're doing our own nursing jobs or living our lives, but we have the phone on us when it's our shift. And we take um, a call at any time of the night or day from the patients calling us. Debbie, describe the average woman that calls the hotline. They usually call within 24 hours of taking the pill and their usual first sentence is, I found you online and I want to know what my chances are of being able to um, reverse the abortion. I regret taking the pill yesterday. What can you do to help me? We ask a couple of questions like, tell me what you're, what you're going through now. What made you want to change your mind? Do you have support to go ahead and try to reverse? There will be women who say, well, I read this and I read that, and so we'll need to explain more to them. They're kind of a little bit scared. And then there's the ones who will say, I don't care how far I have to drive or how much it costs. Tell me how to get to that doctor. I want to go now. After that discussion, we call that an informed consent discussion, which we think is critically important. Then we ask her, would you like to proceed with attempting to reverse the mifepristone RU46? If she says yes, then uh, we go into our database and we find the closest doctor to where she is. Then the nurse calls that doctor and says, we, we, you know, we have a patient who wants to uh, reverse mifepristone. Can you give her, give her some help? Our goal is to get the progesterone into the system tw within 24 hours of the ingestion of RU46 mifepristone. That's our goal. When the woman is connected to the doctor, initially she'll get a sonogram to confirm that the, the, uh, the pregnancy is viable and get the progesterone. Whether she gets a by mouth, uh, by vagina, or by injection form of progesterone, she will get that as soon as possible and then she will take it every day until the end of her first trimester. And then she's well on her way and she's just treated like any other pregnant patient? Yes. Mm -hmm. If the progesterone fails, then she will usually miscarry right around two weeks. The most common question Debbie and Dr. Delgado get is if there will be any complications to the baby. Debbie has found that many abortion facilities have told young women that taking the first pill but not the second will cause deformities and complications for the baby. But Debbie is quick to assure women that this isn't necessarily true. In the ACOG statement, March 2014, the practice bulletin, it says mifepristone is not associated with teratogenicity. Which means? Birth defects. What is the percent of increase in fetal deformity with the second drug? Four to 12 percent. The, the general population birth defect rate is two to three percent. We have found no serious risks at all uh, thus far in all the deliveries that have resulted from this. There have not been any major birth defects. The only defect has been something called a port wine stain, which is a, a vascular marking or a birthmark on the baby. All the other babies have been perfectly healthy born at term. None of the women who are pregnant now appear to have any problems. Most of the women though we see, the vast majority, probably not 90, 95% though, have not taken the misoprostol. We don't have a way to reverse the misoprostol, so we, they usually come to us in between the two drugs. And this unfortunately is in contradiction to what many women have been told at these abortion centers. They've typically been told when they call back saying, I want to reverse the mifepristone, can you help me? They say, oh, your baby's sure to have birth defects. 
So these clinic workers either are not being forthright or they're not reading the medical literature and giving the good information that they should be giving them. A little gift of the baby inside of you. It's not his fault. It's a gift from God that he was created. Let someone help you figure out how to solve the problems. You have nine months to figure it out and you will not have to live with the regret of um, abortion. Many times those of you in that position who are considering having an abortion feel a great sense of hopelessness. I think many times they feel like they're boxed in a corner and there's only one way out. And so the message I would have for anyone out there is there is hope. There are people who are very interested in helping both you and your unborn baby. You don't have to make that choice of sacrificing your baby in order to continue on and, and to get out of this predicament that you're in. That you can solve your predicament and save your baby at the same time. And you will be much better off if you do that because certainly the abortion we know kills the life of the unborn baby, but it emotionally and spiritually scars the woman who has that abortion. You don't have to do it. There are other much better ways to get out of this situation that will make you feel much stronger, uh, much more empowered, and much more whole and complete and healthy if you choose to choose life. For the past several years, Dr. Delgado has been performing abortion pill reversals and helping women across the globe through abortionpillreversal.com and its 24-hour hotline. As they continue to spread the word about this new protocol, they've seen their success rate grow and are sparing more babies and families from the anguish of abortion. But with success comes pushback from medical peers and pro-abortion activists. How many women and babies have you helped so far? I've had 297 actually get the progesterone out of about 850 calls. Not everybody decides to take it. And we have 90 perfectly healthy births and 75 women are, are pregnant. Our success rate has been around 60% most of the time. The range has been from 55 to 60%, depending on when we've taken a snapshot look at the data. I didn't really get any pushback until this started being publicized in the, uh, the general media over the last couple of months. So-called abortion experts, what they're saying is that uh, this is junk science. And I tell them, well, it's not junk science. Everything we've done has been very methodical and done very, very well scientifically. It's just new science. The other thing I point out is that there is a lot of science underlying this. Lots of science with rat studies, a rat study out of Japan where they gave mifepristone RU46 to one group of rats. Another group of rats got mifepristone RU46 plus progesterone, and they saw that all the effects of the mifepristone RU46 were negated in the rats who got the progesterone at the same time. So that to me is good scientific evidence that it does work at blocking the effects of the RU46. Then they say that, well, uh, the early studies with uh, mifepristone RU46 only, the incomplete abortion rate was anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. Again, the uh, incomplete abortion rate does not imply that the embryo is still alive. The incomplete abortion just means that the contents of the uterus have not been emptied. And so they're saying, well, if uh, up to 40% of the time there's an incomplete abortion, if you don't do anything, it's going to be just as good. So just tell the woman not to do anything if they change their mind. But even if we assume that 40% of the time the baby is still alive, which I don't think it is because, like I said, incomplete abortion does not imply that. If you increase the chance of survival from 40% to 60%, that's still a great increase. It's actually a 50% relative increase in the chance of survival. Just in that vein, there was a, an abortionist in Kansas who said that um, there's a 50% fail rate with mifepristone by itself and that you could give a woman a large dose of purple Skittles and get the same result. Yeah. And so that 50%, that a lot of them have been quoting that, but that's an exaggeration of the data. They're using that as a talking point, and obviously he's read what other people have said, and, and so it's, it's being propagated. So I think we're, we're able to counter that pretty well. 